Welcome back. In the last episode, I looked at a technique called walk forward analysis, which is used to optimize trading systems. And I also started to look at some of the major advantages that this technique brings with it. Advantages that make it, in my view, one of the best ways, if not the best way, to optimize systems. But there are a number of major gotchas that, if you're not aware of, can mean that this technique will be far less effective than it could be. And so that's what I'll be covering in this particular episode. I'll be taking a much closer look at all of those pitfalls and also be talking about the best practice approach to get the maximum benefit out of the technique. Although walk forward analysis can be the most effective way of optimizing a trading system, that's only the case if certain guidelines are adhered to. By ignoring these guidelines, you'd probably be better off using a more simplistic optimization approach. So let's take a quick recap of where we've got to so far. In the previous episode, episode 12, I firstly covered what walk forward analysis is. In order to illustrate the full benefits of this process, it was first important to understand some of the issues and the problems that exist in a more simplistic optimization process. And it was only when we understood those that we could then look at how walk forward analysis provides a direct solution to those issues. And of course, we also looked at many of the other additional advantages of using the walk forward analysis process. Now, if you haven't already seen that episode and you're not completely sure what this process called walk forward analysis is all about, then you really need to watch that first. And you'll find a link taking you straight to that episode in the description right below. OK, so if you're still with me at this point, I'm going to assume that you already have that understanding about what walk forward analysis is. So we're now going to start taking this approach to the next level and starting to look at what the best practice approach is and also specifically looking at how you can avoid certain pitfalls in the process. Now, when we talk about these potential issues with the walk forward analysis technique, Many of these are actually the same issues that you will encounter in any optimization process. And so I think it's worth covering those first because they're just as applicable to WFA as they are to the optimizations that you've already been using. But after that, there are some issues that are very specific to walk forward analysis that we'll also cover. So for those of you that follow me, you'll have heard me talk about these issues many times in previous episodes, but I'm just going to go through them very quickly now because it's always good to recap. So when undertaking any type of optimization, the first thing that you should always have at the forefront of your mind is statistical significance. Without statistical significance, the whole optimization process can be completely useless. Now, this revolves mainly around the number of trades that you're getting in your optimization phase and also the number of trades that you're getting in your walk forward validation phase. And if there are too few trades in either of those, then you will not be getting the most out of your optimization process. And the same applies to walk forward analysis. Now, the next point that you need to be aware of is the number of parameters that are being optimized. I always give a rule of thumb for myself where I have a hard limit of three parameters but try to keep it to the most important two parameters for any system. And this dramatically reduces the chances of over optimization. Now, if you're optimizing five, 10, 15, even more parameters, and believe me, I've seen this happen, then the chances of you producing a system that's going to work in live trading is virtually zero. 
you are guaranteed to have overfitted your system. Now, the next point worthy of note is the number of parameter combinations. Now, this is a function firstly of the number of parameters, but also the number of step values that you have for each of those parameters. And the simple rule of thumb here is that there needs to be a significant percentage difference between each of those. So for example, if you have a parameter, it would be better to use the values of 10, 20, 30, up to 100, rather than 1, 2, 3, 4. The difference between these latter ones is so insignificant that it really isn't worth the extra time to test them. Now the impact on overfitting here is certainly less than the previous point. So the number of parameters being optimized is by far the most important thing to keep low in order to ensure that you haven't overfitted. So this second point isn't quite as important, but it's also important enough to take note of. Now, if you want to investigate any of these further, and you want to look at the rationale behind why this is the case, and also want to see some real life examples of how over-optimization occurs, then be sure to take a look at some of my previous episodes in this backtesting and optimization video series. And so just to reiterate, just like these points are important for any simple optimization, they're also as important when using walk forward analysis. So we're now going to turn our attention to the issues that are very specific to the walk forward optimization process. But before we look at those, let's take a very quick look at what I'm calling the baseline approach for walk forward analysis. So as we saw last week, this is a multi-stage approach to optimization, where there are multiple pairs of optimization and walk forward phases. And from each of those pairs, the optimization produces the most robust parameter values that then get passed into the walk forward validation. As we progress from stage to stage, each optimization produces its own parameter values that may well be different to those produced in the previous stages. And as we said last week, the whole purpose of this is to produce parameter values that are going to be the most effective for the current market conditions. And this is one of the major advantages of walk forward analysis above and beyond a standard optimization process. And of course, the final optimization that takes us right up to the current date is sometimes called a pre-live optimization. And this produces the parameter values that get passed forward into our live trading account. Okay, so now that we understand what that baseline approach is, let's look at some of the alternatives that can cause massive issues with the walk forward analysis technique. So the first of those is as you can see on the screen now, where instead of each optimization phase moving forward in time, it's just the end date of the optimization that moves forward and the start date remains fixed. Now, when taking this approach, the very final optimization, the pre-live optimization, if you think about it, it's exactly the same as a more simplistic approach where the entire period is used for the optimization. Now, although this appears to be a fairly common technique, it completely defeats the objective of what walk forward analysis is setting out to achieve. And that major advantage of optimizing to the current market conditions is lost completely. And here we end up with exactly the same issue that we had with a more simplistic optimization, where the parameters that are coming out of this process are a compromise of all of the different market regimes that have been experienced during that pre-live optimization. And so the outcome of this is that the parameters will probably be okay whenever those market regimes are encountered but they won't excel in any of them. 
And so if you've decided that walk forward analysis is a technique that you want to pursue, you must avoid this model at all costs. This will not enable you to achieve the desired outcomes from the walk forward analysis technique. Okay, so we've now made a good start in looking at the issues that are specific to walk forward analysis. But there's two more major issues that you need to be aware of if you're going to be successful at using this technique. So click top right now to go to the next part where I'll cover them in detail.